The race to vaccinate Americans against COVID is accelerating as new strains of the disease spread around the United States. 32 states have now detected variants of the virus, first found in the UK, Brazil and South Africa, putting even more pressure on the vaccination push and on hospitals. David Begno is in Los Angeles, where officials are worried about two confirmed cases in the city of the more contagious UK strain. David, good morning. Good morning. Look, they're worried because L.A. was one of the hardest hit communities in the entire country, even before we started talking about variants. This morning, we're in East L.A. in the community of Boyle Heights. Ninety percent of the people who live here are Latino. And since November, within the Latino population here in Los Angeles County, deaths with COVID-19 have soared 1,000 percent. 1,000 percent. This morning, we've got an exclusive look. We're going to take you inside White Memorial Medical Center, which is just right over my shoulder, two blocks away because the front lines of the COVID crisis is here. In fact, you have active duty military personnel working right alongside civilian nurses trying to save lives. Can we do a quick huddle? Wesley Willard manages the ICU here at Adventist Health White Memorial. This is one of LA's hardest hit hospitals. The most difficult thing is knowing that we're caring for a patient that may not make it. Uh, even given all the best efforts. On his staff of more than 120, his first okay. lieutenant, Lana Bagwell. Okay. The strength that these nurses and these healthcare professionals have to do this day in and day out is amazing to me. She is one of the roughly 20 medical personnel sent by the U.S. Department of Defense as a reinforcement to hold the line against the invisible enemy, COVID-19. She has been on the front line right here for three weeks. How much time would you normally give someone to orient? If it was a new employee, we'd probably do, with experience, probably um, four, four weeks with everything. And you got a shift and a half. Yes, sir. Because time was of the essence. Time was of the essence. Mm -hmm. Adventist Health sits right in the middle of Boyle Heights, one of the hardest hit neighborhoods in Los Angeles. Willard says socioeconomic conditions play a role in this. About a third of all the families living here make less than $25,000 a year. They have multiple families living in one home. They're not able to socially distance. Some of the stories that I've read, you know, backgrounds of the patients, they're the sole breadwinners and they still had to go to work. And it's so unfortunate. This is in many ways ground zero. Absolutely. Willard himself is a West Point graduate, a former army captain. He served active duty for five years, including one tour in Iraq. Given what you've seen in a war zone, how does this compare? I think there's a lot of similarities in the ability of our nurses to pull together, have that teamwork mentality, just like my soldiers did. I felt tremendous pressure because I didn't want to drop the ball. So I felt tremendous pressure to come in, learn everything I could, and really integrate myself and become part of the team. And I think we accomplished that. Active duty military on the front lines right here in America's neighborhoods. Listen, here in Boyle Heights next week, they're going to go into the community to start vaccinating people. A lot of people who live here may not have Internet access, don't know where to go to sign up. And there are similar issues with underserved communities around the country. Take New York City, for example. 24 percent of the population is black, 30 percent Latino, but those groups account for only 11 and 15% of the vaccinated. Let's go to New Jersey, it's even lower. 15% of the population is black, 20% Latino, but they only account for three and 5% of those vaccinated. So Gail here in Boyle Heights, they're gonna go to people's doors, to their neighborhoods, knock on the door, ring the doorbell next week and offer them the vaccine that way. Oh boy, David, uh, listen, the numbers are so low, they're so tough to hear and it's so important on this first day of Black History Month to get the word out. This is not a virus that you want to take any chances with, but I know people are afraid, so education must continue. Thank you very much, David Begno. Always good to see you.